How are you? Are you happy? Are you really happy? Okay. I'm Vianna. I live in Montana. So your weather is really hot to me. Are you ready? I guess, um, by the way, we're, we're about 500,000 practitioners to 600,000 in the world right now of Theta Healing. And every religion, because what we teach is to connect with the divine. And so tonight I'm going to talk to you about how weird you are. Is that okay? Good job. I guess by now you realized that you're something different. There's something special inside of you that, that has a drive to seek knowledge and something special inside of you that will seek it no matter what. And it's because your souls are divine. You are a group of unique individuals that are here on the planet to actually make changes on the planet. So before you get really sad about the condition of the planet, don't be, because you're here and you're going to make a huge difference in the planet. And I'm going to talk to you about divine timing. It's like one of my most favorite subjects. So first of all, I want to thank my wonderful friends here at the ashram. They are amazing. I know you've had a chance to meet them, but they are really, truly seekers of knowledge and truly amazing spiritual people. And they are real. And in a world where things are difficult, it's sometimes hard to find someone who's real. But you're real. So divine timing is, you know, you know about your path. And you know that you're on your path, your purpose. For some reason, you were born knowing you probably have a purpose. Or you search for a path. That makes you unusual. Just thought you should know. For some reason, when most of you turn on the television and you turn on the news, your heart feels sad when you see what people do to each other. And that makes you very unusual. Just thought you should know. Now, divine timing is something that everyone on the planet has. But the planet is mixed with all kinds of different people. Thank goodness the planet has you because your divine timing is a little bit more complicated than others. So what is divine timing? So divine timing is not only when you find your path, but when the universe comes in to support you. So a lot of people start off on their path and they know, you know, perhaps you're supposed to start a healing center. You know it, you feel it. And you can't get it started. You try, but it just won't come together. And it won't come together because the timing isn't right. Now, divine timing is like divine intervention. When the universe opens and goes, it's time. So as you seek your path, and as you mix with people, and you start to sort out yourself, and really get to know the divine, you get closer and closer to really knowing yourself. And Theta healing is a technique that takes you to a dream state. A state that you would not get in unless you were dreaming. Or unless you were fasting for several days. Or unless, unless you maybe were playing video games. But we'll come back to that later. Now come on, you guys are way too quiet. I know you're tired, but... He got a smile. Because divine timing is something that comes into your life whether you like it or not. So say you are perfectly happy working as an attorney, minding your own business, living a great life, and all of a sudden you feel this push, this need to know more. And the next thing you know, you find yourself in an ashram building houses. Well, that is what we call divine timing. And you can arrive at your divine timing. You can arrive poor, mad, struggling, or you can arrive happy and joyful. 
but you can know when your divine timing is. So I know my divine timing is teaching Theta healing. It's like the universe picked me up from where I was and put me where it wanted me. Just like that. I mean, technically, I was actually trained to be a nuclear security guard. I was actually trained to actually, you know, fight terrorists. That was way back years ago when there wasn't such a problem, so it didn't feel like a bad career at the time. And <laughs> it all has to do with the United States government. They needed women. I was available. I had little children. I was divorced. But the love of herbs and the love of studying different things to make my body healthy pushed me onto my divine path, and which is now Theta Healing, in which I have taught for like 23 years. And, and let me tell you, I didn't really teach it. I just remind people of what they already know, just so you know. I found a way to go into a deep meditative state that would take people hours to meditate to. And in that state, your mind opens up and it, it expands. So you release dopamine, growth hormones, serotonin. So your brain actually becomes awake and you have an experience of being able to heal your body at a much quicker and faster pace. And the only thing that you need to learn Theta Healing with is maybe a little bit of imagination and the belief of a divine and a creator. And because we are all connected to this creator, we are all and able with our birthright to tap into this energy. And you can tap into it in many ways. So many of you have studied lots of healing modalities, you've studied lots of things. Still, your curiosity is still there. So here's how it works. You have a purpose. Everything that you have ever learned, everything that you have ever studied, everything that you have ever experienced matters. And with those energies, you are able to follow and find your divine purpose. Now, I, to be honest with you, 25 years ago, I studied security, which is really interesting because it really helps me as I travel the world. My love was observing people, so I have done literally thousands and thousands and thousands of readings. Oh, because in that state, you can actually go in and look in someone's body and see their heart beating. You can see their cells dividing. You can see viruses. Now, of course, like any technique, you have to practice. But that's not what I'm talking about right now. I'm talking about whatever your path leads you on. And your path will lead you. But when divine timing is right, it will help you. Now, when I decided to to leave security, I found an office immediately. I found everything that I needed. And I found something really amazing. I found a way to connect with the Creator. And it was so important to me, I actually went through two husbands in order to keep what I love. Yes, it's true. I have been married four times. I have a husband in every direction. <laughs> so, just so you know. I spent my life looking for one person. I used to talk about him all the time to all my friends. They thought I was crazy. But I always saw myself with this man from Montana. It turns out he was real. I used to call him my guy from Montana. I used to tell him he would come and find me one day, in which he has and did. We've been together for 20 years. His name is Guy. Okay. The fun thing about divine timing is you have the right to know what yours is. And tonight, I'm going to teach you some simple meditation techniques that will actually help you manifest things into your life, but also to show you your divine timing. Now, manifesting is an interesting thing. You see, there is a law in the universe called free agency, and you all are allowed to think what you want no matter what. 
And so when you go up into theta and you start manifesting, there's a huge chance it's going to show up in your life. And if it didn't show up in your life, then you have a belief that says you don't deserve it, it will cause problems, but it's always a belief that kind of blocks it. And in Theta Healing, we teach you how not only to see your beliefs, but also to recognize that you carry genetic beliefs from your ancestor and historic beliefs, which can be every memory that ever was. And we teach you that. It's awesome. It's cool. However, while you're manifesting, one thing can really mess you up, and that's your divine timing. So if you go up and you manifest into Theta that you live on this amazing desert island by yourself and the Creator knows that your divine timing is to, you know, teach a million people in the world, you're probably not going to get the island. Just is. So tonight I'm going to kind of show you kind of how to mani manifest, taking you into a Theta state. You will, if it's your first time, you'll go into theta. You'll still go into a dream state. It'll be like a wonderful visualization. But the more you practice, the deeper you'll go. And after a sleep cycle, if you do the same manifesting technique tomorrow, you'll be able to manifest better. And what do you want to manifest, really? You know, love, friends, you know, a chance to open your mind, a chance to learn, whatever you want to manifest. But after I teach you this first kind of meditation, it will train your mind how to do the meditation. And then I'm going to show you how to go up and ask for your divine timing. Now, what you need to know is that there's more than one divine timing. And when I say divine timing, it's your path. So my path in Theta Healing has lasted, uh, well, it's been my whole life since I was strange and weird. But for 23, 24 years, I've taught Theta Healing. And that's one divine timing. That's one. But what really it means is this is my path. This is what I selected before I came to Earth. Now, we have free agency. We were all born with it, but we had it before we came here. And so there's certain things that you want to do with your life, a life purpose, a meaningful something. And so as you go into your soul level, your, your higher self, your energy knows this, it will create situations so that you will create this. And if you're not creating it, divine timing will pick you up and put you where you're supposed to be just like magic. However, divine intervention that goes with divine timing happens all the time. Like all the time. You know, 20, 24 years ago, I had a nine-inch tumor in my femur. And I healed it. I thought, well, that's cool. This is awesome. I want to try it again. And it worked. I liked it. I thought, wow. So I showed my friends how to do it. They could do it too. And I have to tell you, I was a little disappointed that they could do it too. For that one moment, I thought, I am special. But then I realized that the Creator loves all of us. And the energy that moves in all things is in every soul. And then all of a sudden, I realized that there were people that shared the same ideas, the same values, the same energy that I did. I teach all over the world and I teach people from every religion and they all can connect to the divine and they all have a divine purpose. The Creator told me I had four divine purposes and if I did and made sure that I followed them with my heart and I did my divine purpose, I get something back for that, by the way. Just so you know. I know you, you are learning to be selfless and and to, to really focus, but quite frankly, I'm a little selfish. I just want you to know. Because the Creator told me that if I follow my divine timing, I will meet the people on the planet that will change the world. 
So when I meet you and you're sitting here, I realize that I am sitting in a group of masters that have the ingenuity, the intelligence to make a difference in more than one person's life. You know, realize how many souls you are touching when you teach and when you learn and when you talk and you wake people up and you are important and you're amazing. And I get that privilege of meeting you. And I remember when I first came here, it made me so happy. Because I saw all these souls that actually had a purpose and a, and a chance and a, and a desire to connect with the Creator and to allow others to do that. And I realized that you are rare, but you are everywhere. So you're not alone, and you deserve to see your divine purpose. And maybe you've lived 50 years, 60 years, to write one book that will touch a million souls. Or maybe you're going to write one song that changes people's hearts. You know, believe it or not, Mozart was an amazing master. He touched so many souls. And he touches every little child that listens to Mozart. You know, they decided Mozart was really good for the baby to listen to in the fetus. So now babies are listening to Mozart, which is cool in the fetus. No, just thought you should know. But whatever it is that you're supposed to do, whether you're to help one soul you are changing history. And as you change your beliefs and open your heart, you start to change things for the generations behind you and in front of you. Now, DNA talks to DNA, just so you know. And as you change a habit, a belief, it actually reflects back into your family. So as you're studying yoga, and I would like to mention, let's talk about yoga. You know, I hate to tell you this, but when I was young, and I was young once, I just want you to know. I mean, my son's going to be 38 this year. So, but I want you to know I was young. <laughs> yoga was kind of in the voodoo hoodoo stuff. You know, people who did yoga, they were like, mm. now yoga is in cancer treatments, in cancer centers, in hospitals. Just so you know, you are watching this change come to the planet. And it's too bad our, our news focuses on all the negative things going on in our world because there's a lot going on. A lot. And if you get caught up in it, it can make you a really sad day, a, a sad moment. You know, turn the news on, it's always like, ah. <laughs> but a lot of amazing things are happening in the world. You know, and there's a lot of amazing people. And you're going to watch that. You're going to watch it change. You know, when my children were young, we didn't have cell phones. I don't even know how we got along without cell phones. I have no idea. You know, we didn't have a cell phone to talk to each other. I have to talk to my family, like, all the time. And we didn't have that. Now it's normal. It's normal for you to get on the internet on your telephone. It's normal. Can you imagine what kind of spiritual technology you are witnessing? You're witnessing in, in complete transformations. Complete. You know, you were all witnessing the fact that we, we had a pope. Pope John Paul was an amazing pope. And then all of a sudden we got this really weird pope. <laughs> no offense, if uh, just just saying. And usually you keep that pope until he dies, but they went, eh, we think we're going to change. That's the first time they've ever done that in like 2,000 years. That's kind of amazing. 
You know, if you start looking at the religions and the countries, all these countries that decide they don't want dictators, and you're watching this, and maybe you have a part to play, maybe you have an inspiration that will change the planet. You know, I taught a woman once that was a biologist, and you know what she was supposed to do and what she was working on? She was working on algae in the ocean. She was working on the, the plankton, the plankton in the ocean. It gets too warm with the global warming and it dies. And she was working on how to genetically shift it and help it so it would live in warm water. And when I met her, I looked her in the eyes and I thought, oh my gosh, she's one of the world changers and I get to meet her. And so I sailed her after the class. I said, now you re remember me when you like solve this problem, you know, so I can call you up and say hello. You want to play? How about I take you up into a meditation and let you manifest? Oh, and there is some rules for this, so can I give you some rules before I take you to this meditation? Is that okay? First of all, I do talk a little fast, and that's so that your brain doesn't say, oh, this cannot be done. You have to chase my words so that you don't talk yourself out of it. Okay? Number two... You have to manifest for more than one thing. Your, your mind, if you give it a grocery list, will work better and faster for you. So you have to have manifest about five different things. Do not ask for all your psychic abilities right now. Otherwise, it, your body will not be able to keep up with it and it will burn out. Ask whatever the Creator wants to give you. If you're looking for your soulmate... Ask the Creator for a compatible soulmate. <laughs> okay? It's important. It's a very important thing. Just thought you should know. And when you go up into the energy of creation, you just ask for a soulmate, the Creator is going to go, which one? Because a soulmate is someone you've known from some other time and place. So you want a compatible soulmate? Do not ask for someone that loves you unconditionally because that is a dog. <laughs> okay? No unconditional stuff. Relationships should have a few boundaries. Just want you to know. You may ask for someone who's a monogamous compatible soulmate. That's always a good deal. You need to ask the Creator, and compatible means compatible, but we are drawn to people by energy. So if it's a man you want, you need to ask for a man. <laughs> okay? If it's a girl you want, you got to ask for a woman. Hopefully a woman. Okay? So when you go up to the Creator and you ask, Creator, send me a guide. Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, you should all just go to the Creator. It is the most loving energy of creation there is. It's loving. It's the most intelligent, truthful, kind energy there is. It's in every atom. It's in everything that you know. It's inside the protons, inside the quarks, is this pure energy. But if you ask for a spiritual guide, you need to ask for one that is smarter than you. You do not want a dumb guide, okay? And you do not want a spiritual guide that is so intelligent you can't understand them. So if you want to ask Tesla to be your guide and you know nothing about how the universe works, it will be a difficult relationship. So you want a compatible guide. Do not ask for all the heavy metals to be out of your body. I am sure that many of you know that toxins are bad. But your body is made of heavy metals, metals like magnesium and calcium. 
the creator knows this and so when you ask the creator to get rid of your heavy metals you will hear this this laughter in the universe because there are laws in the universe that keeps you from asking stupid things of the universe if you were to pull out all the heavy metals out of your body you would turn into a puddle of water so you don't want to do that just so you know okay enlightenment if you want to ask God for enlightenment let me explain what enlightenment means it means you come to the realization that you're part of all that is. And in, if you want to ask the Creator to help you ascend and still be in your body, you have to learn many virtues that your soul knows. But you're actually asking the Creator to give you lots of lessons to teach you those virtues. So you want to say in an easy way. Okay, because if you go up and you make this command highest and best, sometimes the best lessons are not the easiest. So if you want easy, but you want ascension, eh. and I know you guys don't want easy because you're here at the yoga retreat and you are going to work. I, I, you know, you know that. It's a real good lesson in life. You know, my husband once told me if anything ever happened to me, the love of my life said that he wanted to be a monk. But after he came to the ashram and saw that you guys work seven days a week, he's like, no way. <laughs> Isn't going to happen. <laughs> he thought he got to go sit and meditate and do nothing, but no, that's not how it works. So here's the deal. You're allowed to manifest anything you want, but you have to manifest at least five to ten things. And then you have to realize if your subconscious thinks it's difficult, it won't give them to you. So an example of belief work in Theta Healing is a man that wanted to manifest a house, a tree house actually. He wanted to manifest a tree house, but when he visualized it, he realized he didn't really want it. He visualized him and his family living in this home in the trees, and he looked at me and said, I don't want this. And I said, why not? And he said, if I live here, my mother-in-law will move in. <laughs> and when I said, would you like me to teach you, your mind, your cells, with the Creator's help, but you'd like to know how to say no to your mother-in-law. And you know what he said? You don't know my wife. <laughs> so you have to, when you visualize what you really want, you need to visualize what it's going to feel like. Okay? You've got you to visualize that. You know, a long time ago, it's been 10 years ago, I had this heart problem. They told me I had congestive heart failure, which, by the way, we healed, just so you know. I had to heal it because it looks really bad if a healer dies <laughs> of an illness. It's just <laughs> terrible. You know, it ruins your reputation. It's awful. Okay? And the worst problem is, is that I'm also a psychic, and, you know, I can't die in an accident either because I should have known, you know? <laughs> but anyways, they told me I had this heart problem and I remember going home being mad that I would have to heal, heal something again. And by the way, I did heal it. I have a perfect heart. Another story. But when I went home from the doctor, I thought, well, I can't die. I haven't had a Jaguar yet. You know, I thought, I always wanted a little black Jaguar that I could drive around. So I went home and I ordered one. Yep. And then I healed my heart. So then I was like, uh-oh. Because let me tell you why. I had to drive four hours to go get it. And when I got there, my husband didn't fit in the car. <laughs> because I'd manifested it. I didn't actually think, I'd never drove one. 
You know, it's fast, but it's not comfortable. And my husband is tall. So he couldn't sit in the passenger side. He was like this. And so he had to drive in the driver's side like this all the way home. And it was a lease. I was stuck with it for like four years. And so I just sat in the garage because I didn't die. You know? So before you manifest something, you know, before you manifest a new car, drive it. You know? Same thing happened when I... Oh, and a year later, check this out, a year later, I'm traveling in Italy and I go into a coma from something called menococcal meningitis. I was in a coma for like three and a half days. You know, my little clients in Hawaii called me up and said, Viana, we heard you died for three days. I'm like, no, I didn't die. I didn't die. This is, that's not what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you about the coma some other time. This is what I'm telling you. I decided maybe I was traveling too much because it took me a while to recover. And which, by the way, is a miracle. I can hear, I can see, I can walk, and all of this was very unusual. Just thought you should know. That's not the point. Here's the point. I decided to stay home and build a school so I could teach people at least in the summer at home. It was a great idea. And the guy and I decided, well, we've been together like, I don't know, 13 years at the time, maybe, you know, 10, 10 years. We'd never actually had time to stop traveling and teaching. We decided we were going to go camping. So I went down, I found a camper, and I kind of liked it, but I thought, no, I'm going to get a cheaper one. So I manifested this camper. It was cheap, it was affordable, we were going to go camping. So we drive up to the mountains, and when we get there, I realize my husband doesn't fit in the camper. I was so busy looking for cheap that I forgot to lay him down, and all the beds are in squares like this. He's this much too long. He can't fit in the beds. And so I'm up there with my family. They've all got little rented campers. They're all sitting there. And we're like miserable in this camper. It's new. It's, I have my allergies. Guy doesn't fit. <laughs> you know? So you know what we did? Why everyone went to sleep? We unhooked our truck and we drove down the canyon to our house. <laughs> went to bed. Got up the next morning, took a shower, drove all the way back, hooked it up. Nobody even knew we were gone. <laughs> and at that moment, we realized when we manifested this, we didn't even think about it. We, we actually like our own bed <laughs> that he fits in. And we also realized that maybe we don't really like that. You know, it's fun. We can drive up and cook in the mountains anytime, but maybe we shouldn't sleep there. And if, oh, and for you guys that are from other places, the United States people in the United States will actually go into the mountains and put tents or campers and stay there on purpose. Just so you know, it's something we call recreation. It's the strangest thing. <laughs> Now, I spend so much time trying to explain to other countries that that's what we do for fun. It's just unbelievable. Okay? Which, by the way, is fun if you're not my age. Okay? When you're young, you can sleep on the ground. When you're my age, the ground really isn't happy with you sleeping on it. And that's also something we discovered. So before you manifest, think, is this something I really want in my life? And it can be anything. Because the creative energy of all that is, is the perfect abundance of anything. Now I'm going to tell you, I know the creator of all that is will take care of you. I know that when you bless things, it makes a difference. And I know that I have manifested food and clothes when I had none. I'm telling you, you can manifest what you need in your life. I have blessed, when the kids were young, we didn't have very much, but I would bless the food, I'd bless the spaghetti, and I'd have people come over, I'd have 20 people come over and I could feed everyone, because I know that I blessed that there would be enough. 
Now, the power of the creator is unstoppable, but before you manifest, you better know if you want it. And if you want a soulmate, you need to know that once you get one, you have to live with them. <laughs> so before you decide to manifest the love of your life, you need to know that they may not pick up their socks. <laughs> Just so you know. And they have a brain. As I'm going to tell you right now, that everyone in this room has like a remarkable healing teaching energy. And you know what that means? That means that you create exciting, amazing lives. So you create more drama than the average person. <laughs> Just so you know, you're never going to be happy with somebody that walks around and goes, I love you. <laughs> never going to happen. You're going to want somebody who has a brain. And you know what happens when you live with another person who has a brain? They have an opinion. <laughs> now, you can't put them in the closet and pull them out when you need them. <laughs> and compatible does not mean easy. That means that they're compatible with you. Okay? Avoid asking for your twin flame. They're exactly like you. And even if you like yourself, they'll be like you when you were 18. But they're going to be like you. And trust me, I know me. I could never live with me. I have the most patient husband because I, I am such high maintenance. You would not believe it. So if you are high maintenance, and you probably are, <laughs> you need someone that will understand you. Okay, so we're going to go up, we're going to manifest. <laughs> but you have to understand that divine timing interacts with this. So if you want a healing center and you know that's your purpose, you need to probably go up and ask the creator of all that is what your purpose is. Because the creator has much deeper plans for you than you realize. Now you are part of God. You are limitless. And if you work with your divine timing, you can create and watch things create for you. You know, I, I see these people sitting in front of me and they are following their divine timing. You know, how did, how did these people come from Israel to the Bahamas? It was their purpose. You know, they found their teacher and they followed him. And because of them, you get to come here. This is their purpose. So you're going to have a chance to go up and ask for your purpose. We're going to do the manifesting first just to kind of train your mind of where to go for the answers. Now, I'm going to take you in a visualization. Your mind is smart. This right here is the smartest computer that was ever made. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. Nobody can tell you different. I think you think your iPhones are smart, but not like this. You know, cells divide. You breathe. You see. You hear. You know, you, you've got this magical instrument. You are living in the most advanced life support system that was ever created. But this is your home. Your soul is much bigger, and it's limitless. So as I take you up and let you practice manifesting, I'm going to train it what to do. And then I'm going to tell it where to go. It's, it's going to connect with the energy of all that is. And there's a couple ways we do this. And when we do this, it takes your brain to theta. Tested hundreds of people. Okay? Now, hundreds of people. Okay, probably thousands. I can't even tell you some of the things we used to do to test them either. We put all these things on them, tested their brains. We ran out of the sticky stuff. We used suction cups. <laughs> People would walk out of classes with big old little hickeys on their brain. It was amazing. Their husbands were like, what are you doing? But we learned. And we learned that we can change our beliefs. We can shift them. We can make them help us manifest, but I'm telling you, the purpose you set for yourself before you came here 
is divine. And when the timing is right, it will manifest itself. And even if your divine timing lasts four years, it will manifest itself. It'll push you through at different times. Right when you think, oh my gosh, I can't, I don't know how we're going to get bigger. It will come in like magic. And there you go. And before you manifest a healing center, though, I need to tell you one thing. People who manifest a healing center forget that they have to work with other healers. And I just want you to know, not all healers have no ego. Healers do not always get along. So you want to manifest that you're working with compatible people. And while you're at it, manifest you have a good accountant. You always need a good accountant. Okay? Some of you are teachers. Some of you are scholars. Some of you just want to get your body fit and strong. But whatever your divine purpose is, it will manifest. So if I take you through this exercise tonight and it doesn't manifest to you tonight, it will. Okay? Want to play? I gave you the best instructions I could. I gave you everything to avoid any stress of manifesting something that you thought you wanted. Okay? Visualize it. What does it feel like? What does it feel like to have your healthy body? What does it feel like to have your skills? What does it feel like to have what you search for so much in your heart? Okay, you ready to play? Okay, so you get comfortable. Okay. All those sitting down, you're going to put your feet on the floor. You know why I told you that, right? Because it sounds professional. That's why. It just sounds good. You, you don't have to do that. You can sit any way you want. You ready? It's just these guys are all like so straight. Okay, you ready? Okay, I want you to take a deep breath in. I want you to breathe in through your nose. And out through your mouth. And if you breathe in really slow through your nose, but even slower out. Anytime that you breathe out longer than you breathe in, it lowers your blood pressure. It helps you relax. I want you to imagine that there is energy in the earth and that it comes up through the bottoms of your feet. It moves up through your body up through your spine, up through your whole body. As it goes, it's going to open your chakras. And of course, you realize that they will become like one energy. And as you go up, the energy comes up and out through the top of your head, and it makes a beautiful ball of light. And I want you to pretend you're in that light. And I want you to imagine that you go past the universe, as if you could go through the universe. You can fold it, you can move it, but you are going past it. And so what would that look like? And what would that feel like? Now I want you to imagine that all of a sudden you see layers of light. Light. It goes a little darker, then it's light, light, light. And now I want you to imagine you see a golden light. And I want you to go through it. Now I want you to imagine that you're going through something thick, like water, really thick water or jello, and you're going through that. And all of a sudden you go up into this tingly white, white light. And I want you to see that it is as white as snow, that it tingles, it sparkles. It may have a little bit of blue and a little bit of pink in the beginning, but as you go through it, you can feel this energy. And this energy is the energy of the creator. This is the life force. This is what creates everything. This is what seeps into our universe and creates atoms. This is the energy of all that is. And while you're there, I want you to imagine that the ball of light disappears and you can just feel this energy through your whole being. And you're going to say, creator of all that is. This is in my life. And I want you to imagine what it is that you want to create. I 
I want you to visualize what it would feel like to have it. It doesn't matter whether it's material or spiritual. What does it feel like? Health, love. If it's a love that you're manifesting, I want you to imagine holding their hand. If it's the next step, I want you to imagine what that is. I want you to imagine all of it. Now when you're finished, I want you to imagine just going back into that tingly light, feeling the energy go through your cells, this energy of perfect knowing love. I want you to imagine it filling your cells. I want you to say, Creator, fill my cells with this perfect energy. Thank you. And now I want you to take a deep breath in. Say, thank you. It is done. It is done. It is done and open your eyes. Now if you noticed, I left you in this energy of connectedness. You see, enlightenment is when you realize on a mind, body, spiritual level that you are part of all that is. And so this will train your mind that you're part of all that is. Now that you've created and trained your mind the first step. We're going to take you up and let you go see what your divine timing is. Remember, if you see something that is so weird, like talking in front of thousands of people or listening to something that you wrote, it's probably true. It's not going to be your ego. It's just the Creator putting you where you need to be to help this planet you know, shift a little. It needs a little shifting right now. It's not really ready to graduate, and so we're going to kind of help it along. Okay? Want to play? All right. Take a deep breath in. We're going to do this again. This time you're going to imagine lots of energy coming up through the middle of the earth, coming up through the bottoms of your feet, moving up through your body, up again through the top of your head, making a ball of light. This ball of light that you're in is completely transparent. You can see out. And I want you to imagine that, boom, you go through the entire universe because the creator of all that is is bigger than the universe. And I want you to imagine that you're going through layers and layers of light. This is the spirit world, and this is the energy of ascended masters. And you're going to go through a gold light. Now you're going to go through something that's thick, like water. This is the laws of the universe that keep everything in harmony. And now I want you to imagine again that you are in the tingly white light of the energy of all that is. The perfect love. The perfect intelligence. This knowing love that knows everything about you and loves you because you are part of it. And I want you to imagine that it's starting to go through every cell in your body and you can feel it. And you're going to say, creator of all that is, show me, please, my divine timing. Thank you. And I want you to just relax and allow the picture to come into your mind. And whatever comes to your mind, just take it. Hold it. You'll understand it later. Okay, now take a deep breath in. Go back to that tingly white light. If you saw nothing, it is simply not the right time. There's a maybe a little fear. Do the exercise again tomorrow. You will go down much deeper. Now take a deep breath in. Go back to that tingly white light and open your eyes. Now I'm going to take you in one more thing. This will only take about three minutes, but it will leave you in a very good mood. There is more than one way to reach this wave of theta. Unusually, when you go up above your space, your brain goes into an alpha brain wave. And it is only when you say the word creator or God that your brain go into a theta brain wave. So obviously, there is more to you than your body. You're going up. You're reaching something. 
Now, every cell in your body understands that there is a life force, and your mind knows it. So, on an electrosuplograph, your energy is going to come up here to your crown. But I'm going to show you another way to go into this meditation that is going to make it really fun. You ready? Okay, again, relax. Take a deep breath in. I want you to feel your body. I want you to feel your eyelashes and your hair. As you sit very still, I want you to imagine what it feels like to feel the air on your body, even through your clothes. Now I want you to imagine that you, your body, this platform, your chair, are part of you. That you share the molecules with this platform, this platform and you are the same energy. And now I want you to imagine that you, your body, the entire island in the Bahamas, all of them are part of you. And now I want you to imagine that the earth and you are one energy. It's not overwhelming. You just can feel the energy. And now I want you to imagine that you, the earth, the universe, the layers of light, the golden light, are all part of you. Expanding out. And now I want you to imagine that you, the earth, the universe, the lights, golden light, the thick jelly-like substance are part of you and now everything is part of this tingly white energy of all that is. Everything turns to it. Pure energy. You are completely this energy. This energy is completely you. It's important to realize that this energy, you are part of it. Which means you're part of it. It doesn't begin with you. You are part of it. And I want you to say in your mind, I am part of all that is. Now take a deep breath in and say, Creator, thank you for my life. And now, thank you. It's done and open your eyes. Ta-da! Now, because you've actually gone and requested to know your divine timing, it will show itself. Now, if you didn't see it tonight, if you didn't have visions of something doing the exercise again, you will. And remember, divine timing is when the universe comes in to help you. So it is your path. It is your purpose. But it's when divine intervention says, here, it's time. This is open. This is now. Here. And it will happen for you. Hope you had fun. Have fun. You're good. Oh, sorry. All right. Are we? I've never known how to make the good exit. We're, 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 I love you.